Steve Alford, Nevada head basketball coach since 2019, won a championship with Bob Knight back in 1987, and, uh, of course, played in the NBA for a little while, former uh, Dallas Mavericks second-round pick, 1987. Steve joins us now. Steve, thanks for joining us. How should we remember Bob Knight? Yeah, that's that's a hard one, Dan. You obviously know him very well as well. But um, I'll just always uh, appreciate Coach for his preparation, his discipline, um, his ability to teach players to compete every possession, no matter what the drill was, um, improving daily. Uh, and then ultimately, I, I just think he was the ultimate winner. And those are traits that I think a lot of our players, a lot of teammates, we've been on – uh, a lot of text, group text, and we've been talking about that, that um, not not just all those traits uh, apply to the basketball court. I think even more so his legacy will be um, the people that were able to play for him and coach with him. Those traits have made them winners off the court, and that's probably what I'm going to remember most about Coach. How difficult was it in the moment when you're being coached by Bob Knight to understand now what you've extracted? Oh, that, that's no question. I, I think that was the uh, that was the art of what kind of player you're going to be. If um, uh, obviously a little different language, uh, so uh, you had to not ever take things personal. Uh, you had to know he loved you and loved you deeply. Uh, there were a lot of times, and, and he said it a lot in coaching to so many players. Um, he'd always say, "I want you to be better than you want to be." And I always took that to heart. I always, I never wanted to be that. I wanted him to know that, um, no, I wanted to be that good as well. It, but there were days, Dan, that um, <laughs> he definitely wanted me to be better than I was on certain days. And you had to, you had to cipher everything out and understand what he was saying. And when you did that, uh, that's when I felt like I really grew as a player and as a person. But I wonder when you won that national championship, how much was joy? And how much was more of just a relief? Oh, it was joy. Um, you know, the relief part, I think, kind of gets over, kind of dramatized. Um, I think when you're in, when you're in battle, uh, he was the general. I mean, that's who he was. And that's the, that's the foxhole you wanted to be in. And we knew that as players. We were the best prepared team. Uh, we felt like we were the m most disciplined team. Uh, he will tell you, uh, you know, I got an autograph picture on my wall and he talks about when he wrote the autograph, uh, how great a player I was. Then he put in parentheses offense. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so you understand, you just, you understood your role and you went out and played that role the best. But you, I think it's like anything, Dan, when you put everything in it and then you win it, uh, and you have success, um, you have great joy and appreciation for the process and the journey. Ever think about leaving Indiana? Never. Now, there were times that I would call mom and dad and say, hey, you're two hours away. <laughs> Come get me. Uh, <laughs> you know, those, those, those things happen because it, it's, it's, it wasn't easy. It was tough. But I think that's why, you know, I got better. I, you know, Dan, I was, I was chasing – the all-time scoring record at Indiana, which, you know, when you're an Indiana kid and you grow up, man, all the incredible players that played there, and now you're in that, the media is talking about you being this and that, and uh, we're, we're right in the Big Ten chase, and we're going to Northwestern, uh, a team that, you know, we had hammered, and then on to Wisconsin, a team we beat 55 points at home, and we beat Wisconsin in triple overtime, but the Northwestern game was the first trip. And if I just if, if I get my average, I break the school record and you can't help but think about those things growing up in the state, knowing what you're trying to do. Uh, and I can remember after that game, we barely won the game. My teammates played a lot better than me and coach just ripped me uh, in the locker room. He ripped me in the media uh, and it was not about scoring. Uh, it was all about my leadership. And I, I really at that point maybe didn't understand it. But when we got back from that road trip, I'm like. You know, it wasn't about some individual thing. It was about my lack of leadership and learning how to lead my team through difficult times. And that's what made Coach special. He just knew how to do the things that he knew the buttons to press uh, to make you better. Steve Alford, Nevada head basketball coach, won a championship with Bob Knight 
That was back in 1987. You got a picture behind you on the wall. Uh, describe that picture for the uh, audience that's listening on radio. Well, that's just a picture of Coach, and uh, I think I think uh, Daryl's in it, and Keith. I think Keith Smart's in it as well, and just other teammates of just after winning the championship in the Superdome in New Orleans, and uh, you know, just being there with Coach and experiencing that with Coach um was a very very special moment for all of us when did you uh, have your last conversation with him uh, i got to see him about a month ago um not really a conversation coach was not in very good health but i was able to sit with pat his son uh for about three hours in the home and um you know just tell stories with pat pat was in junior high when i was playing at uh at indiana so known pat uh and the family for a very long time obviously going to coaches camp since third grade i i grew up knowing uh, coach knight's family very very well so i was able to do that but uh um he's at a much better place and in peace now because it's been a it's been a tough road here over the last several months tell the story when uh you had to walk home from the airport <laughs> Well, and that's the thing, Dan, you appreciate about Coach is that uh, he did it the right way, Dan. Uh, not only was he a highly successful winning coach, but he did it with uh, integrity of the rules. It was always about respecting the game with him. Uh, he loved his players. He loved his team. And I did a, I posed for a calendar. Um, I was the, I was the month of February. I was the love month, Dan. Um, <laughs> wait, um, wait, this is a but, fundraiser for a sorority on campus. Th yeah, this was a fundraiser for a sorority on campus for handicapped girls to go to summer camp. And I thought I was doing the right thing. And, but the wrong thing was you're, you're taught at Indiana, you go to compliance, you go to the assistant coaches, you make sure you cover yourself. And I didn't do that. That was my mistake. And on top of it, it was a Kentucky game. <laughs> and anybody that knows coach um, and the feelings of Kentucky at the time um, would know what I'm talking about. So the irony of me being suspended for the Kentucky game for a compliance issue uh, really dug deep to coach. But it, it, again, speaks volumes of coach. He didn't fight it. He didn't try to get administrators or people from the outside to fix it. Uh, he's like, no, you made a mistake and uh, you're going to feel that mistake because it's not just going to affect you. It's going to affect your team. Well, I, Dan Dockage was our GA at the time. I'd played with Dan for a couple of years. And so I went to Dan, I said, Dan, I've been suspended, but am I supposed to go on the road trip or not? He said, I don't know what to tell you, but I think I'd be on the bus. So I was on the bus. And when you, when you exit a bus uh, for a road trip or any other time, coach would always hit you on the back as you left the bus. And we got our trench coats on. It's cold. And I'm one of the last players off the bus. And I see him just hitting everybody. And I'll never forget, Dan. He hits me. <laughs> and then he grabs the back of my coat and pulls me back in the bus and says, what are you doing? You're at home. You're suspended. Think about what you did. Support your teammates from home. Find your own way home. <laughs> so I'm in, it's 20 <laughs> minutes from campus out in the middle of the winter. And I just start walking. I see the plane go through the cloud <laughs> and I'm walking. I get about a half mile up the road and the, the poor bus driver saw all this. And the, bus, <laughs> the bus pulls up next to me. He opens up and he just looks at me. He goes, need a ride. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'd be great right now. I'd appreciate a ride. I hope the coach that uh, the bus driver didn't know that, uh, you know, coach. Oh, no, we, I think that was, that was just something kept between the bus. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> hey, my best to the family. Great to talk to you. Thanks for Thanks. reminiscing. Thanks so much, Dan. I appreciate you having me on. That's Steve Alford, Nevada head basketball coach since 2019 and won a title there at Indiana in 1987.